Okay, unfortunately, I didn't have my camera available for me, with me, uh, when I opened up my reactor. And once again, this is the uh, anaerobic composter. And this is all that is left of grass clippings that came up to here once upon a time. So it has degraded down to this, which is about two feet down into this uh, Tupperware trash can that serves as my composter. And let's see if we can yank this out real quick. Okay. And there's the base or the depression into which the, uh, the bottom of the composter sits to form what is essentially an airtight seal around the bottom or at least air restricted seam and this is what we have let me take a minute to uh, dig some of this out still very moist This is what it's been reduced to. So I'm just going to scoop this out, dry it out, screen it, and apply it. And right here are some of the uh, the older bags that I use to uh, as my anaerobic composting. Uh, reactors and under here is some of the finished product from the bags under here is more finished product I don't know if you saw the centipede and under here still more and that was uh, taken out last year this was taken out last year it's all nice and dry here that just needs to be screened this was taken out earlier this year. It's drying out and it needs to be screened as well. And this was taken out this year. Likewise drying out and needs to be screened. So the anaerobic composting uh, does what it's supposed to do. The one thing, the one caveat is that seeds and viruses are not killed by this so you may not want to include anything that might have a large bi uh, bacteriological or viral load to it uh, I'm talking in terms of like perhaps uh, waste material uh, excrement material because you will not kill the viruses and you could uh, actually if you use this material for your vegetable gardens you could spread it and also if any of your plants let's say that you had some tomatoes that may have had a uh, tomato virus of some sort and you put waste material into this you could actually uh, spread that virus to new plants in uh, succeeding years so those are some of the caveats to actually doing anaerobic composting but generally I just use grass clippings and uh, leaves and pretty soon I'm going to use fruit these are small apples from my apple tree now squirrels have gotten into that so I'm a little concerned about potential uh, viral bacteriological um, contamination that might result from that but the uh, squirrels didn't seem to be uh, sick or infirm in any way as a matter of fact they destroyed my quite a few of my tomatoes so I'm confident that they're nice and healthy but uh, in any case I'll just have to make sure that I apply this to the flower side as opposed to the vegetable side 
when it finished composting. Okay, thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, concerns, observations, and or just uh, suggestions and general conversation, always welcome. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, just a quick addendum. This is the material that came out of the reactor today. It's uh, kind of damp, as I mentioned before, but it uh, looks like it's going to do the trick. And this is the bottom of the reactor here, or the composter. And the holes in the bottom are to allow uh, any uh, biological activity to occur. Uh, very often times you might get uh, uh, worms, red wigglers, or some other type of worm that can uh, actually work its way up through the bottom to uh, aid in the uh, breakdown of the material. working this down to get it as flush in the bottom as I can and afterwards I'll uh, take some fresh earth and put around the seam down there just to uh, fill it in and make an air restricted uh, vessel Okay, so we started the uh, the next crop, or the next batch of compost. And on top of this, I'll uh, put grass clippings until I fill it up and wet it down, then uh, make an airtight seal. Uh, this is actually going to be the very first time that I've actually tried to do uh, these many fruit, so I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. But today is August 25, 2013.